In the previous video, we saw the modulator or the transmitter of the double slide band suppressed carrier technique, where we multiply our m of t times the carrier and we get phi of t, m of t cosine omega ct. And by the way, we said that, uh, or I forgot to say that, phi of t is called the modulated signal. m of t, we said that it is the modulating signal. Phi of t is called the modulated signal. Okay? Uh, now, the receiver or the demodulator. Let's discuss the receiver or the demodulator. The receiver, its purpose is to do what? Is to retrieve m of t again. Is to get m of t from the received signal. So the receiver receives phi of t, which is m of t cosine omega ct, and wants to get m of t back. So the first idea that comes to mind is we should divide by cosine omega ct. We should divide the received signal by cosine. However, unfortunately, this is practically impossible. It's very difficult to do a hardware or to implement the hardware that divides by cosine wave. That's why we found another way to retrieve our signal. And the other way is very similar to the modulator. So the method used in the demodulator is very similar to what is used in the modulator. What they will do is they multiply again by cosine omega ct. So they will get a signal here, let's call it E of t. E of t equals what? E of t equals M of t cosine squared omega ct, right? So when you multiply M of t cosine omega ct times another cosine, you get M of t cosine squared omega ct. And M of t cosine squared omega ct, we can use the, uh, uh, the identity of cosine squared, which can be written as half 1 plus cosine double the angle and then we can expand this as half m of t plus half m of t cosine 2 omega ct now look at this expression and you will find that e of t we started in e of t we started to get what we want we started to get m of t our information signal once again but there is another component that, that is undesired. We have another component which is m of t cosine 2 omega ct. So this is the signal in the time domain. Let's try to uh, plot this signal in the frequency domain. How this signal looks like in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain, it will be half m of omega plus we have half here and we have m of t multiplied by cosine. We said that any signal multiplied by cosine, you shift Right, you shift left and you divide over 2. So we divide over 2, half will be 1 over 4. M of omega minus, you shift to the right by 2 omega c. And you shift to the left by also 2 omega c. So this is the expression in that frequency domain. If you want to sketch it, you will find that it looks like this. Half M of omega, this is the same as M of omega multiplied by half, so we'll give you something with amplitude A over 2 by the way I'm plotting E of omega now the frequency spectrum of this thing and then we have M of omega minus 2 omega C so the same M of omega shifted to 2 omega C and multiplied by 1 4 so this will be A over 4 and we have m of omega shifted left to minus 2 omega c and multiplied by 1 over 4 so you will get something like this we want at the receiver we want only this term and we don't want the undesired term so we want to keep only this part which is this part we want to keep this part and we want to get rid of the other parts how can we do that? You can do that using a filter, a low pass filter. So you can use a low pass filter here, low pass filter with a width that is the same width as our signal 2 pi b. Okay. If you do that, the result will be only this component. So after the filter, this is the only component that we remain, which is half m of omega, which is in the time domain, half 
m of t. So if you use a low pass filter here, if you use a low pass filter with width 2 pi t bandwidth radian per second, then what you will get? You will get half m of t. And then you ask yourself, did we get now our information signal back? Some people will say, no, we have our signal multiplied by half. But we discussed this before. We said that if you multiply your signal times a constant, does this distort your signal? No, multiplying by a constant doesn't distort your signal. So don't worry at all about this constant. This constant is just like lowering the volume or increasing the volume, right? So you can just, by a simple amplifier, you can just get rid of this half, right? But here, we retrieved our signal without any distortion. We were able to get back our information signal without any distortion, it's just multiply by constant, which we can get rid of using an amplifier. And like this, we were able to get back our information signal again. Okay, so this is how, this is how the, uh, the demodulator or the receiver of the double side band suppressed carrier works. As you see here, in order to, for this receiver to work properly, the cosine here that you multiply at the receiver must be synchronized, perfectly synchronized with the, with the cosine that you received for, uh, from your signal. So these two cosines, the cosine that you receive over the antenna and the cosine that you use at the receiver must be perfectly synchronized. That's why we call this receiver, this type of receiver, we call it synchronous or coherent receiver. In the synchronous or coherent receiver, this is very important, okay? In the synchronous or coherent receiver, the cosine that you use here at the receiver and the cosine that you use, uh, that you receive at the receiver must be perfectly synchronized in frequency and phase. Otherwise, the output will not be half m of t. It will be something else. It will be distorted out. Okay, so the carrier that you use here and the carrier that you receive must be perfectly synchronous. And this is not an easy thing to do, practically speaking. This is not an easy thing to do. Why? Because usually you receive a signal that you don't know its phase. The phase, when the signal travels through the air, you receive it with a different delay. Delay means phase, right? So you receive it with a, a random phase that depends on the length of the path of the signal that the signal travel the path it can be some random path especially in mobile uh, telecommunications where you are moving in the street so the path of the signal can be of random length it depends on the reflections that the signal can reflect on a building and come to you it can reflect on a car and come to you so the length of the path is random which makes the phase that you receive here and we are doing it in, in a simple way here, we are doing it in a simple way, but actually you receive it with a random phase. You receive the signal with a random phase. And that's it is very difficult to estimate the phase at the receiver. You can do it, it can be done, but the receiver will be a little bit expensive, okay? Because you need a lot, a lot of processing in order to estimate this random phase. Also the frequency. The frequency itself, you transmit omega C, but you don't receive exactly omega C. The frequency changes. Why? Because as you are moving, there is something called in physics, there is something called the Doppler effect. Doppler effect, because of your speed, it can change the frequency that you receive by a delta. It can be up or down by delta, right? Doppler effect. This Doppler effect changes the frequency that you receive. So instead of receiving omega C, you transmit it using omega C, but you receive omega C plus or minus delta. And hence, again, in order to estimate this change in frequency, it is very difficult and makes the receiver more expensive. That's why synchronous or coherent receivers, they are very good receivers. However, they are expensive receivers and not easy to implement receivers. Okay, keep this in mind. So synchronous or coherent receivers, you need to synchronize with that theta, you need to synchronize with that exact frequency that you receive in order to get the, uh, the uh, output correctly. Otherwise, the output will be distorted. Okay, so uh, we'll discuss this later because this will be the reason that they will uh, think about another technique for amplitude modulation to avoid this synchronous or coherent receiver. 
this will be the reason to think about another uh, technique that we'll study later. So keep this in mind, okay? One more thing before we end uh, this video is that in order for our demodulator to work correctly, we said that we need the low pass filter to filter our signal and remove all uh, other components. In order to do that uh, properly, we need to guarantee that these components are not overlapping, right? So uh, if we want them not to be overlapping, because if you overlap the filter is going to pass part of this here. So imagine that these components are overlapping, so we'll have a component like this, and the other component will come like this, and the other component like this, then they will add together actually and they will distort, they will cause a distortion here. They will get something like this here, and they will add together here and get something strange. Then when you filter, you will get something distorted, you will get something uh, different from the original signal. So in order for proper demodulation, for correct demodulation, you need to guarantee that these images are not overlapping. And in order to guarantee that, we uh, guarantee that this point is much greater than this point, or at least greater than or equal this point. If we are talking about ideal uh, low pass filter, this is impractical, but theoretically, if we are talking about ideal low pass filter, then this point must be greater than this point. This point is 2 omega c, minus 2 pi b and this point is 2 pi b so we need to guarantee that this point which is 2 omega c minus 2 pi b is greater than or equal theoretically speaking greater than or equal than 2 pi b which means that omega c must be greater than or equal to 2 pi b this is the condition for our demodulator to work correctly otherwise these images are going to overlap and the signal will be distorted so the carrier must be greater than or equal than 2, 2 pi b and this is theoretical if we assume that we have a sharp low pass filter but practically speaking the low pass filter we don't have a sharp edge low pass filter we have a low pass filter that goes down gradually like this so we have actually to increase omega c more to guarantee that these images will not overlap or this image will not go into the range of our practical fit. But theoretically speaking, this is the condition. We'll stop here now in this video and see you in the next video.